All right, let's talk some baseball now with our baseball panel. DraftKings contributors Gary and Thorne and Nick Fryer, along with RotoWire's Eric Halterman. What's up, dudes? It's MLB high or low. We're going to take a look at some DFS salaries and sportsbook odds for tonight's MLB slate. You're going to tell me if they're too high or too low. Uh, Whose salary is too high, Gare Bear? Yeah, let's start with uh, Julio Urias. Uh, This isn't too much about Urias. It's kind of about who he's grouped with. I just think there's such a massive drop-off on this slate once you get past Lance McCullers and Robbie Ray, who have both been pitching just out of their minds the past little bit. For Ray, it's his past nine starts. For McCullers, it's his past four starts where he's racked up a 32% strikeout rate. Um, Urias has not exactly had that recent success. If you go back to May 29th, the span of nine outings, he has an ERA hovering around five. His strikeout rate is just 23%, and he's given up 1.6 home runs per nine. This all kind of eerily is happening at the same time as the substance crackdown. His spin rates have been a little off. I think there's a lot of uh, correlation <laughs> there. And uh, Urias just isn't someone who's deserving of being almost $10,000, especially with how well the Giants hit left-handed pitching. So I just don't think he's in the same class as McCullers and Ray, yet he is priced that way tonight. Okay, Eric, whose salary is too high? Well, we're going to keep dumping on the Dodgers here, I guess, because I'm going to go with uh, basically all of their expensive hitters. I don't, I don't even know which one to pick, but they've got Mookie Betts, Max Muncy, uh, Justin Turner, Chris Taylor, and Will Smith are all in the top. 10 most expensive hitters. They make up a full half of the top 10. And I just don't think that's accurate, even though they're talented players. Many of them have been hot lately uh, against Logan Webb for the Giants, who I think is actually pretty good. Uh, He had just a 536 ERA in 94 innings heading into this year. It's not a huge prospect at all, but he's just 24 years old. So the fact that he's improving shouldn't surprise us. Uh, this year, he's got a 354 ERA, which is actually slightly worse than some of those ERA estimators. Um, his standout skill is he keeps the ball on the ground uh, almost as well as anybody. 59.2% ground ball rate is the second highest among pitchers who have thrown at least 50 innings. Most of the guys who are very high in that category don't get a ton of whiffs, but he actually has an above average strikeout rate as well, 25.4%. You have to drop all the way down to 10th in ground ball rate to find somebody who has a strikeout rate higher than that. And he's allowed just three total earned runs over his last five starts. Uh, Granted, some of those have been short starts, and it's possible he doesn't go too deep in this one, which is why I'm not necessarily loving him as a fantasy choice himself. But I do like him enough that I would stay away from the expensive Dodgers. Nick, what about you, dude? Well, as much as I don't like Wainwright and Hendricks prices at over 9K, I understand the matchups that they have tonight, and we'll talk about the game, that game a little bit later. But I'm with Gary on this one. Julio Arias was the one that jumps out right away. He's just under 10K. I was I was blown away when I saw this because, again, he's going against the Giants. And in case people forget, the Giants are actually good. This isn't the football Giants. This is a good team. And with, with these guys, I mean, can you, you – know, Sorry, with I got New York on the mind. I'm talking about Kenny over here. It's um, okay. Yeah, be careful. Yeah. So Gary mentioned how the Giants are hitting left-handed pitching well all around this season. I mean, this month they have the 10th best OPS, and they're not striking out against left-handed pitching either. So this is so Arias is not going to rack up the strikeouts, and this is a team too that tagged him last time out, albeit on back-to-back appearances for him against the Giants. Still, I don't like him tonight, uh, given what they did last time in their current form. Whose salary is? Too low here, Mr. Fryer. Uh, I, J.D. Martinez, I was kind of surprised to see him at 4.5K. I understand Robbie Ray is pitching tonight, and he is legitimate at that price tag tonight at a 9.9K. But for J.D. Martinez, I mean, this is a guy who, before the All-Star break this month, was at 6K at one point. Um, and, this, and he's been nothing but sub-5K since the All-Star break. I know it's just been a short bit. But this month, I know it's abbreviated. We're not you know, at the end of it or whatever. But he's had a good month. He has a, a 1081 OPS this month. Um, he just had a huge night on Monday, uh, 22 DK fantasy points. And look, in, you look at the guys and their averages for uh, fantasy points you know, on a night-to-night basis. I understand some guys are boom or bust. And you know, there are some people where they're, they're, it's a little bit – 
not representative of, who, of the player that they are from a fantasy perspective. But with J.D. Martinez, you know that he's he's going to get doubles, he's going to get home runs, or he can knock in runs too. He can get his fantasy points in a litany of ways other than stolen bases. So this is a guy who I think is very reliable at 4.5K, even going up against a guy like Robbie Ray tonight. All right, how about you, Eric? Yeah, I think it's Joey Gallo, and he's, he's not cheap at 5,100, but I, for how he's been hitting lately and the matchup he has, I think that counts as cheap. As we all know, Joey Gallo has a strikeout problem. Heading into this year, he's never struck out more than 35% of the time. Uh, sorry, never struck out less than 35% of the time. Um, but he made some changes in the offseason, uh, switched up his stance a bit, and switched up his bat, uh, which I wasn't necessarily buying as a big thing. But he's got his strikeout rate down to 31.7%, which is still high, but that's you know normal slugger high, not Gallo and nobody else level high. Um, and he hasn't really sacrificed any power to get there. His isolated power is more or less right in line with his season, with his career numbers, and he's hit 24 homers on the year. Uh, but I like him especially today because he'll get the platoon advantage against Matt Manning. And if you want to talk about uh, a guy who has a strikeout problem, I guess that would be Matt Manning on in the other direction. Uh, striking out just 8.9% of opposing batters. You don't see many single-digit strikeout rates in the majors these days. And it's not as if he's done anything else to make up for that. Basically not far from league average and walk rate and ground ball rate. So it's no surprise. His ERA is just below seven. Um, I said some bad things about him before his last start. And he had what for him, I guess counts as a good start, gave up two runs in five innings, but even in that one, three strikeouts against three walks, it's not like he suddenly turned things around. Um, so a guy who can't strike anybody out uh, is exactly the kind of guy I want Joey Gallo against tonight. Uh, Gary, and whose salary is too low in your beautiful eyes? Thank you. Um, I just think the Phillies in general, obviously there are some expensive bats here. You've got Bryce Harper. You've got JT Real Muto. Uh, you have Reese Hoskins all above $5,000. But there are so many ways to stack this Phillies lineup because of the cheap bats that surround those three guys. Uh, you know, Gene Segura is probably going to hit leadoff. He's 3,400. You've got Andrew McCutcheon possibly hitting cleanup. He's 3,100. Didi Gregorius is starting to hit for power in the month of July. He seems like he's finally back to 100% after a litany of injuries and IL stints earlier this season. He's 3,700. And they're going up against Orioles legend Asher Wojciechowski, who I didn't even <laughs> know was in the New York system. Uh, he's got like a five and a half ERA in AAA this season for his career. He has a 5.95 ERA, giving up exactly two opponent home runs per nine. This is the dictionary definition of an emergency start. The Yankees don't want to start Asher Wojciechowski, but they have to. And I think the Phillies are going to take advantage. All right, Eric, which team's odds, as we poke over to the sports book now, which team's odds are too low? So maybe favored, but should not be. Uh, favored but should not be. I'm looking at uh, the Cardinals at minus 125 over the Cubs. Um, I, I wouldn't necessarily say the Cubs should be big favorites here, but it, it's, it's, I think, no more than a push. Offenses are quite similar. Um, over the course of the season, the Cubs rank about five spots above the Cardinals in WRC+. Plus, but since the start of July, I reversed that. Cardinals are six spots ahead, but I wouldn't. Uh, weigh that small sample too much. I think that's enough to say the offenses are basically a wash. Uh, and then Kyle Hendricks versus Adam Wainwright. I would prefer Hendricks there, I think, for sure. Had a very bad April, 754 ERA, including two seven-run blowups against Atlanta. I actually got to go to one of those as my first uh, post-pandemic or post-lockdown game and saw him give up four home runs in the first inning. It was uh, not not a very happy Wrigley Field that day. But they've been happy with his starts since the start of May. He's got a 265 ERA. Uh, that is beating his ERA estimators, and he still doesn't strike out a ton of guys. Or he's never struck out many guys, and he's striking out even less, really, this year. It is a diminished version of Hendricks, but he's still a fine starter and has been for most of the year. Adam Wainwright, on the other side, is surprisingly hanging on at age 39 as completely respectable. ERA in the high threes is only a hair better than what the ERA estimators has. Um, not, nothing really bad to say about him, but I, I don't think he's quite as good as Kyle Hendricks now that Hendricks has gotten past his early struggles. So I, re I really don't see any reason uh, to prefer the Cardinals in this one. I think it's basically a wash, maybe slight edge to the Cubs. Gary, and which team's odds are too low? 
Yeah, I'm in lockstep with Eric here. I don't think the Cardinals should be favored. Um, it's not that heavy a line, obviously, and I would say if I had to bet a side in this game, I would prefer to take the under. Uh, I just think Hendricks is pitching really, really well as of late, and if you want to ever bet on Adam Wainwright to do well, make sure he's pitching in St. Louis. We've got about a half decade of data that he is a triple-A pitcher on the road, and he is somehow still pretty good when he pitches at Bush Stadium. Um, but I look at the Cardinals who are three and 13 in their last 16 games against NL central opponents. Uh, I look at the Cubs who are 10 in two in their past 12 games that Kyle Hendricks has started. And that makes sense because he's got a 2.48 ERA in that 12 start span. His last six starts in particular, he has a 1.98 ERA. So while the season long numbers don't look that great, because as Eric alluded to, he was absolutely demolished in the month of April. Kyle Hendricks has been exactly who we've known Kyle Hendricks to be the past two months. He is just the soft contact king we know and love. So I would say the Cubs maybe don't deserve to be favored in this game, but as Eric said, it should probably be closer to a push. Uh, Nick, which team's odds are too low? So favored, but should not be. We're in complete lockstep as a group in this one. I, this is this is the only one that jumped out to me tonight um, because look, the, the they they the guys highlighted it already. But the one thing I did want to mention, as much as bringing up this kind of number does make me feel like I'm going to jinx it a little bit. Uh, Hendricks has not lost to the Cardinals this season, and he's had quality starts in each outing: six innings, two runs; six innings, two runs; six and two third innings; one earned run; three runs total. But again, the Cubs have not lost lost any of those games that Hendricks has taken the mound against the Cardinals. Um, I'm not going to be the dead whore on this one. The guys made made all the points that uh, that I was going to make here. So yeah, I would go with the the Cubs tonight uh, like over the Cardinals. All right, guys, we got the last one here. I need you to be a little quick. So which team's odds are too high? So one you think has good value tonight. Go ahead, Nick. I'm going to go with the Giants against the Dodgers. We talked about Urias and why we're not big on him necessarily tonight, especially at his price point from a DFS perspective. Um, Eric did highlight how Logan Webb has been solid. I know he was out for all of June, but he's been back. And I know he's been limited in how much he's been pitching, but he's still been effective. Um, and when you look at the bullpens, I know that the Dodgers, their, their bullpen ERA has been good, but that's, of course, not the only thing we can look at when we're talking about bullpens. Their FIP indicates that they're, they're due for a negative regression, whereas the uh, Giants bullpen is kind of is going in the other direction when you're looking at that ERA fifth split. So I like the Giants uh, as the underdogs tonight against the Dodgers. Gary, and which team has some good value tonight on the sports book? I'm going to keep rolling with the Tigers. Uh, I'm surprised there isn't a little bit more respect on the DraftKings Sportsbook tonight. They are 7-0 and in their last seven home games. And the Rangers, since coming out of the All-Star break, have been outscored 43-3. to They have a WRC plus of 11 in those five games. Congratulations to the Rangers. You managed to make it out of negative territory. Uh, I'm just going to blindly bet the Tigers until the Rangers show me anything. All right, Eric, real quick, which team's odds are too high? Yeah, I'm, I'm on with Nick on this one. It's the Giants. Uh, I liked it more last night when it was plus 155, but at plus 135, I still like it. I talked about Logan Webb earlier, how he's shown everything you want to see. And Julio Urias on the other side. I had a 303 ERA in his first 10 starts, a 471 ERA in his last nine. Gary and linked that maybe to the sticky stuff crackdown, but also we should expect him to fade as the season goes on because he's never handled a high workload. His 112 innings this season already smashed his previous uh, career MLB high of 79 and two thirds. So I would not expect the early season Urias going forward. And really we haven't seen him for a couple months now.